Thank you for joining our Bible study on Colossians. We have an exciting journey ahead of us. Our goal is to encourage you to read the Bible for yourself and live out the spiritual insights as you rely on the Holy Spirit. Colossians is a short letter, only four chapters, but its themes are cosmic, universal, immense. It declares the absolute supremacy of Jesus Christ. As Colossians 1.16 declares, In Him all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, in Him all things hold together. That is the central theme of Colossians, the absolute supremacy of Jesus Christ in all things. We live in turbulent times, and we need to remember all the more that the Lord Jesus Christ is absolutely supreme in power and authority. Now, as we begin our study, the first question as we delve into Colossians is, who wrote Colossians? Colossians is a letter, and the writer of this letter introduces himself right at the beginning. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. The Apostle Paul is the one who wrote this letter, but Paul often includes his fellow minister as co-senders. In this case is Timothy, a young man who became a convert to Christ, most likely during the Apostle Paul's first missionary journey. From the many letters of the Apostle Paul, we learn that the Apostle Paul is very intentional about mentoring other ministers, recognizing their gifts, and connecting them to other churches. So by mentioning Timothy as a co-sender of this letter, the Apostle Paul is introducing him to another church and establishing Timothy's credential as someone trustworthy. That is a great way to mentor young ministers. The next question is, to whom was this letter addressed? The answer is given in the next verse, verse 2. To the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. That is, to the church at Colossae. At this time, the churches were not allowed to have a public meeting place, so they met in a house. So this is a house church in the city of Colossae. Since this is our first lesson on Colossians, uh, let us devote some time on the historical background to this letter. Who was the Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul probably doesn't need a long introduction, but I do want to introduce a few remarkable things about him that we might not be aware of. He was a Jewish missionary to the Gentiles, and he took the gospel of Jesus Christ to Gentile regions which are known today as Turkey and Greece. Recorded in the book of Acts, are three missionary journeys that the Apostle Paul took over the course of 10 years. We today are used to modern means of travel, so it's hard for us to fathom how remarkable these journeys were. According to Barry Batesel in his book, The New Moody Atlas of the Bible, the distances traveled by the Apostle Paul are nothing short of staggering. The New Testament registers the equivalent of about 13,450 miles that the great Apostle journeyed. This estimation is only a calculation of approximate air miles. 
So when one takes into account the winding, circuitous roadways and tracks, he necessarily had to employ the total distance would, be, would exceed that figure by a sizable margin. For your reference, the distance from the East Coast to the West Coast of America is about 3,000 miles. And Beto continues, Considering the means of transportation available in the Roman world, the average distance one could travel in a day, the primitive paths, the rugged, sometimes mountainous terrain over which one had to venture, it becomes almost unfathomable to imagine the sheer expenditure of the Apostle's physical energy. Many of those miles carried Paul through unsafe and hostile environs, controlled largely by bandits who eagerly awaited a victim. Now, if we look at this approximate timeline, the Apostle Paul converted to Christ a few years after the death, of Jesus, death and resurrection of Christ. He began his first missionary journey about 10 years after his conversion. It was probably during his second missionary journey that he began writing letters to the churches. New Testament scholars generally agree that the earliest letters that the Apostle Paul wrote are Galatians and 1 Thessalonians. And he wrote it around 20 years after the death of Jesus, when the majority of the eyewitnesses to Jesus and his ministry were still alive. This is one of the many reasons the New Testament is historically reliable. It was during his third missionary journey that he passed by Colossae. The account in the book of Acts is abridged because the Apostle Paul was revisiting some of the churches that he had planted during the earlier journeys, so there was no need to repeat them. This is the account of the beginning of the third missionary journey. Acts 18, verse 23. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Notice the region of Phrygia. This is the overall route that the Apostle Paul took in his third missionary journey. Let us zoom into the box. As the Apostle Paul traveled through the region of Phrygia to get to Ephesus, he would have followed the main road that passed through Laodicea, which was a large city. Most likely, he did not stay at Laodicea because he was on his way to Ephesus. Now, Colossae, the city that we are interested in, is about 10 miles from Laodicea. Colossae was once a great city, but by the time of the Apostle Paul, it dwindled in size and lost its prominence to Laodicea. As far as we know, the Apostle Paul did not visit Colossae. Now, what we see in this photo is the remains of the ancient Colossae. Certainly, it's not as impressive as other ancient remains from the Roman period, but it is in this city the house church was established, which we know as Colossians. Now, at the end of his third missionary journey, the Apostle Paul returned to Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, he was falsely accused by the fellow Jews, arrested by the Roman authorities, and put in the prison in Caesarea by the sea. Now, then he appealed to Caesar, so from there, he was transferred to a prison in Rome, awaiting his trial before Caesar. 
That happened around A.D. 60. And the book of Acts ends with the Apostle Paul still in prison in Rome. Now you might ask, how is this related to Colossians? Most likely, Colossians was written from the Roman prison shortly after A.D. 60. So this letter contains a more mature reflection of the Apostle Paul in his old age and also concerns about the challenges that the Colossians church was facing. Now, how do we know that he's writing from prison? Well, at least twice in Colossians, the Apostle Paul alludes to the fact that he is in prison. Colossians 4.10 My fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends you his greetings. Colossians 4.18 Remember my chains. One thing about the Roman prison system is that it did not provide meals and clothing for the prisoner. It was up to the family and friends to provide the basic necessities. So Paul's survival was totally dependent on the help from the outside. From Colossians 4.12, we know that Epaphras, one of the members of the Colossians church, was with Paul. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. We don't know why Epaphras was with Paul, but perhaps he was there to take care of Paul's knees in prison. So, who was Epaphras? Apparently, he was a resident of Colossae. He became a Christian either through Paul or other missionaries. He was the one who first introduced the gospel to the Colossians, as we read in Colossians 1 verse 6. Since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth, you learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. It is evident that Paul greatly respected Epaphras, and in one chapter 1, verse 7, Paul calls him our dear fellow servant, a faithful minister of Christ. In 4.12, Paul honors him as a man of prayer, who is always wrestling in prayer for the Colossians. So the Apostle Paul is writing to a house church that he did not plant and probably has not met in person. He has heard about this church from Epaphras. And there is no doubt that they have heard about him from Epaphras as well. He is writing with much gratitude because of the news of their growing faith in Christ. And at the same time, there are some challenges they're facing. So we will get to know what those challenges are in the coming weeks. So with this little background, I do want to encourage you to think deeply for yourself. Again, the most important thing is to slow down and take time to live out the spiritual insights that the Lord has given you. God bless you.